Now we are in the part of the course where we're going to be talking about sound waves and we're going to be talking about music and sound and how these can be described from a physics point of view. The important features that we have to discuss first are the properties of waves. So as many of you are, I'm sure are already familiar that sound has a different pitch with different people, a pitch of an instrument has a different sound than uh, from, from one instrument to another. And one of the dominant differences that our, our ears pick up is the notion of frequency. So we need to understand what frequency means in a physics sense, and then we can uh, apply it to the, the actual sound waves. So that's what we're gonna do in this chapter. I'll start with water waves because this is usually how people get their first experience with waves, a baby in a bathtub starts splashing the water, makes waves in the in the tub. We've all thrown a stone into the surface of a calm pond of water, and the ripple effects can be seen where the the surface of the pond is disturbed by the plunging rock that's dropped in the middle, and that disturbance causes a ripple or a, a movement of uh, the, the wave effect where this spherical circular wave begins to spread out with time. We'll look at this in a little more detail. So I'm going to now draw a picture on the right which shows you an expanding circle of waves. So if we imagine that we can identify the crest of the wave each, uh, uh, on each circle, uh, we have a series of concentric circles that are placed at the crest of, of the wave. So there'll be a crest uh, here, then there'll be a crest here, a crest here, all the way out until we no longer have a disturbance. So we represent these crests of the wave with circles and they're expanding outward to uh, give us a picture of what's going on. The distance between these crests at a fixed moment in time is called the wavelength. So the wavelength will be the distance between these crests. If this is a snapshot in time, the, we get a frozen picture in time of the wave. The wave has been frozen by the snapping the camera very quickly, and this distance between crests is what we call the wave. The most, how quickly the crest moves away from the center gives us the wave velocity. So that's our, the first two concepts that we want to be familiar with. Another way to visualize a wave, uh, wave amplit or wave motion is the bobbing of a weight on a, from a spring. So when a bob uh, hangs up, a vibra I'm sorry, when a bob vibrates up and down, a marking pen can trace out a sign curve on the paper that's being moved horizontally from left to right at constant speed. So if there was a, as you can see, the pin is attached to the top of the ball and the oscillation of the ball will go up and down and as it does, the pin will, will map out what we call a sinusoidal function or a periodic wave that goes up and down. We'll give you a little more description on the next slide. I will point out, however, that the dotted green line is the, is the, is the point of equilibrium that is to say that uh, in, if in its final resting spot, the force of gravity will be balanced by the force of the spring pulling it up. If I pull it down and release it, then it bobs up and down. So there are a couple important other aspects of a wave. We've talked about one of them, which is the wavelength. The other one, which is the distance between crests, or it can be the distance between two points of repetition on the wave. But the other important feature of a wave is its amplitude. How, how high does the wave go? If the stone is thrown into the water with a greater force, the amplitude of the wave will be higher, but that's a feature of the, uh, of the energy of the wave, is, is how much energy it has can be described by how, uh, how, how high of a disturbance it makes on the surface of water. Or in this case, it's how far I pulled down the bob before I release it. And the further I pull it down, the bigger the amplitude will be for its oscillation. So vibration and wave characteristics. We have crests, which we've talked about. The troughs are the low point in the wave. The distance between the troughs is equal to the distance between the crests. And either one can represent the wave. The concept of frequency is based on the idea of how frequently a vibration occurs uh, when observing it at a fixed point. So imagine, for example, that uh, 
you you are fishing from the shore of the lake and you have a, a floating bob on the water with your fishing hook and weight below it but it's sitting and resting there okay? and at some moment in time a speedboat comes by and disturbs your your bob and it begins to oscillate up and down if I were to count how many times per second uh, that bob goes up and down, uh, that would be the frequency of the wave. So the frequency of the water wave would be how many times the bob connected to the line of the fishing line uh, makes a vertical excursion going up and down. The other way in which I could calculate the frequency is to measure the period or the time it takes for the bob to make one complete oscillation. That, that concept of the period of the wave is simply the inverse of the frequency. So if I measure, for example, that it takes a, a half a second for the bob to go up, go down, and back up in one full excursion, then that would be equal to two hertz, or one over one half. Uh, one divided by one half. So the unit of frequency is the hertz, named after the, one of the famous inventors of, of, uh, of uh, modern radio equipment. And um, the, a, the frequency of one hertz is a vibration that makes one complete uh, excursion from maximum amplitude to minimum amp amplitude back to maximum amplitude. It is how many times that does that per second uh, if it does that once per second, we say that that frequency is one hertz. Um, mechanical objects such as pendulums uh, or the springs that we just showed you in the previous example uh, bobbing up and down with a spring attached to it have frequencies on the order of, of anywhere from one to a few hertz or a few, a few cycles per second. Another way of, of expressing hertz is uh, how many os full oscillations does it make uh, per second? So sound has a frequency of a few hundred to up to actually 20,000. It goes much higher than 1,000 uh, hertz. Uh, the hearing goes up closer to 10,000. But it has a much higher frequency. Radio frequencies, radio waves have frequencies of a few million hertz. And light waves have uh, higher frequencies still. And then uh, at the extreme end of, well, I should have said this is a little bit different, but cell phones have a different frequency of a few billion hertz. Turns out that the cell phone frequencies are actually lower than the light wave frequencies, but they're all different ranges. So different, uh, and, and, and by the way, all these three at the end, radio, light, and cell phone fre are frequencies are all based on electromagnetic radiation frequencies of the oscillating electric fields in the in the in the light wave, whereas the sound and the uh, the sound frequency and the mechanical objects is is a different phenomena that we will uh, this, or at least the sound is a different phenomena that we'll look at a little bit later. Frequency this specifies the number of complete excursions of maximum to minimum back to maximum uh, amplitude. It could be the spring bob that we showed. It could be the bob uh, of the, uh, the cork uh, uh, or the bob of the fishing line on the water that's being hit by a boat wave. But the number of waves passing any point per second is, is going to give you the frequency. It's the number of oscillations. If the two vibrations, which is a complete cycle of maximum to minimum to maximum, occurs in one second, um, occurring in one second is, is a frequency of two vibrations per second, and we would call that two hertz. So in mathematical form, the way we, uh, we connect the concept of the period of the oscillation to the frequency is that they are just inverse of each other. So the period is one divided by the frequency, and the frequency is one divided by the period. Example, a pendulum makes two vibrations, that's two complete excursions, from left to right, back to left. It does two of those in one second. In other words, it goes left to right to left to right to left in one, uh, in one second. That's two complete oscillations. So we say the frequency is two hertz. The period must be one half of that, 
which means that the time it takes to make for the for a pendulum to make one complete oscillation from left to right back to left is um, is is one half a second. So that's a simple formula to carry out. I'll let you work this on your own. I'm not going to uh, go through it. This is now something that I think you can work yourself, and we'll uh, let you look at this in, in your in your study time. And these slides are available to you also. What other features can we describe about waves? Waves transport energy and not matter. Example, a stone in a quiet pond and the resulting ripples carry no water across the pond. Uh, the, 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 us, the, the motion of the water molecules on the surface is an up and down motion and they impart their energy to the adjacent molecules but the molecules on the crest are not the same as the molecules of that crest when it has expanded out. So it's the energy that's being transported, but the material of the wave does not move significantly. Waves travel across grass on a windy day. Uh, we've all seen that, 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 that phenomena. Uh, it is not the grass that moves from one edge of the field to the other but it is the ripple effect of the one portion of the grass hitting another portion and that pushing the other, more like a domino effect. Molecules in air propagate a, uh, a certain distance through air, but uh, when they are used as uh, sound waves, for example, they, uh, they don't move significantly from the source of the sound to the eardrum that is, that is hearing it. And we'll see examples of this later. So wave speed uh, describes how fast a disturbance moves through a medium. Uh, it is related to the frequency and the wavelength of the wave by saying that the speed of the wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. That's an easy formula to remember or to, or to use. Uh, and so, uh, we can we can understand quite a bit from that. A wave with uh, one wa a wave of wavelength one meter and a frequency of one hertz has a speed of one meter per second. Now, we take a snapshot of a wave in time. We can measure the distance between the crests. That gives the wavelength. If I'm sitting on a perch right here where the bird is, and I count how long does it take for one crest to hit the post until the time that the next crest hits the post, that's given the period. And one divided by the period is the frequency. So another way of saying this is that uh, this equation is wave speed is equal to the wavelength divided by the period, or wave speed equals frequency times the wavelength. Now a wave, and, and then this is one example. If the wavelength is one meter, the frequency is one hertz, it takes one second. If it takes one second for the wave to for the crest of one wave to, or the time between crests of the wave reaching the post is, is, is equal to one second, then the, uh, then the wave has a, has a frequency of one hertz. And if the wave length, the distance between the crest is one meter, then one hertz times one meter tells us that the wave is moving at one meter per second. So wave speed is the frequency times the wavelength. And for light, by the way, which we'll, we'll, we'll speed up here just to, just to take you to the future chapters. And when we talk about light, uh, for example, um, or sound, generally speaking, uh, these way, the, the, the speed of sound or, or light does not depend on frequency and wavelength. So the product is a constant, which means that the, the, the lower the frequency of the wave, the higher the wavelength, and because the product has to be a constant. Simple question, a wave with a wavelength 10 meters and a time between crests of 0.5 seconds is traveling in the water, what is the wave speed? So, um, if the time between crests is half a second, then we know that is the period. And if the period is half a second, then the frequency is one divided by half, which is which is two. So the frequency is two hertz times 10 meters should give us an answer of 20. And certainly that's exactly what we find in this slide. 
a wave with this 10 meters and two hertz frequency will have be moving at a speed of 20 meters per second. So that gives us a simple way to calculate this. Okay. Now, in addition to, there, there are two types of, of waves that, we're, that we normally deal with in many physics phenomena, if not most physics phenomena. And one is that we can have waves that uh, where the disturbance or the amplitude is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So for example, a water wave, for example, is the water wave is spreading out horizontally along the surface, but the disturbance on the water is vertical. The, the, the crest and the trough uh, uh, are above and below, and if I put my bob uh, in the, uh, on my fishing line in the water, and that wave goes by, I will see it move vertically. So the, 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 the disturbance or the vibration is like the slinky on part B where I'm shaking it up and down and I make a vertical disturbance, but I send the energy of the wave bouncing into the wall and there'll be a reflected wave coming back. So the velocity of the wave is perpendicular to the disturbance. On the other hand, if I now disturb the slinky in such a way that I push on it with my hand and I compress it and then I pull back and I do oscillations with my hand back and forth. For example, I could do it at a frequency of two hertz, for example. Then um, I would generate these compressions and expansions between the, uh, between the compressions that as a whole gives a picture of a wave moving towards the wall. And then when it hits the wall, there'll be a reflected wave coming back. And you can see this by doing using a slinky. And so these are the two type, common types. There's the longitudinal wave, which is the one shown in A. And this is the one that's going to describe the sound wave. Sound waves are generated by longitudinal waves. Um, water waves are transverse waves. And Light waves are also transverse, but we'll get to that later. Um, but this is the, these are a couple examples of what we have. Another one would be vibration of a string on a musical instrument. Um, when you pluck the musical instrument, you, you induce vibrations that are perpendicular to the way in which the string is stretched. And uh, we induce waves moving uh, back and forth between the ends of the string. So transverse waves, uh, medium vibrates perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. Uh, there's a side-to-side -side motion, and there is a side-to-side -side motion. Example, vibrations and stretch strings of a musical, musical instruments. We pluck the string perpendicular to the end, uh, to the length of the string itself. We make a vibration that is perpendicular to the, uh, the direction in which it's been stretched but there are waves that are traveling along the direction of the string, and they, 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 they reflect back and forth from the endpoints. And therefore, the wave is traveling perpendicular to the displacement or the, uh, the, 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 the disturbance of the string, much like water waves on the surface of, a, uh, the surface of water. Okay, so those are examples of transverse, uh, radio waves and light waves and S waves, uh, these are all type forms of electromagnetic waves and the general property of light waves and infrared waves and ultraviolet waves and x-rays and all these things is that they are, they are properties of a, they basically are, can be described as electric and magnetic forces that are propagating through space. And they propagate, the, the electric force is always perpendicular to the direction of the light beam itself. So if I have a light beam moving horizontally, the disturbance, which in this case is, a, is an electric force that's oscillating up and down, is perpendicular to the direction of the light wave. So another example of transverse waves, um, I can have one where I am uh, holding a, a cord, uh, a string that is connected to the wall, and as I shake the string up and down, actually I'm starting here from the bottom and going up, 
uh, the string is initially pulled tight. I give a vertical upward motion, a snap on it, and as I give an upward snap on it, the displacement of the rope is vertically upward, but as I come back down and I oscillate, pull the string back down, then I induce a downward motion, which pulls that portion of the string down, and the other portion of the string that I had earlier pulled up on has now moved over to here, so I get this oscillation motion of the velocity of a wave moving towards the wall, and the displacement is perpendicular. And when it reaches the wall, then the wave will be reflected back, and I'll have two waves. I'll have the incident wave and the reflected wave, and they will add together. So each section of the rope can oscillate up and down, but the wave travels horizontally. So asking another question, the, dist the distance between adjacent peaks in the direction of travel for a transverse wave, well, what is, I guess, the distance, but how do we describe the distance between adjacent peaks in the direction of a, of travel for a transverse wave defines its frequency, defines its period, defines its wavelength, and defines its amplitude. So, as we've said before in all the previous examples, the distance between, if I take a snapshot of a traveling wave in time, like the pic photograph of the ripples on the pond, and I measure the distance between the crests of the wave, then that will give me a measure of its wavelength. So the wavelength is, of a transverse wave is also the distance between adjacent troughs, as, or as it would be, as, which will be the same as the distance between adjacent uh, crests. Another question, the vibrations along a transverse wave move in which direction? Along the wave? the vibrations, the, do the displacements of the, uh, of, the, of the medium of the wave move in the direction of the wave? Are they perpendicular to the wave? Are they both A and B? Well, it's a transverse wave, so we've been describing that, and so the property of a transverse wave is that it's B. It is perpendicular to the wave, by definition. And a longitudinal wave, going back to the previous slide, then the disturbance or the vibrations would be along the wave. And that would be the case of the slinky. The slinky gets pushed towards the wall, then the vibration, the, uh, the individual, uh, the, uh, the, the, the motion of any given coil in the slinky is only a very small amount of displacement, but the wave can propagate all the way down because we see the, the compressions uh, moving down the line as we generate them with our hands. Okay, so I think this is actually a good place to stop.